Alright guys, welcome to another video in my series on binary and logic and that sort of thing. And today we're going to take the next step with our study into computers. And we're going to use an actual logic simulator, which is what I have open here. It's called the Cedar Logic Simulator. We're going to use this to apply some of the things we've learned about binary. And we're going to start from the ground up, so we're not going to dive right into it. But um, we will we will definitely be doing that. So I don't know how much of the screen it's actually showing when we do this. It, I think it's only showing my workspace right here. But uh, basically, this tool has all of the major logic gates that uh, you could ever need, and many that you would never need, I can tell you. And all kinds of cool things like uh, memory chips and processing chips and uh, it, nice inputs and outputs and stuff like that. So I'm gonna give you both a rundown of the program and we're gonna actually do the theory. Now this is a great program, I've been using it, actually today's my first day using it. I've used tons of logic sims in the past and this is my favorite one so far. It's completely free to download, so I'm gonna give you a link in the description and I encourage you to check it out. So let's get going. Uh, basically, logic gates are a, uh, an actual piece of hardware that you can buy and that computer manufacturers build in order to, um, you know, make computers work. And the need for this arises out of the fact that computers are very, very stupid. They only understand two words in their entire language. And that is, they understand, if this is our button, they understand on and off. <laughs> off is when the square is black and on is when it's red. So we saw with binary that we can only have two values in binary, one and zero. But if we chain them together, we can make more and more complex numbers, really up to any number. Now the same is true with, with logic gates. Sure, we start off with the most basic thing we can have is an on-off signal. But if we combine this, we can make really anything, anything that's in your computer. Now we're certainly not gonna get anything that advanced going here, but we're gonna try. So let's take a look at some of our basic stuff. Uh, the most basic logic gate you could think of is really uh, just this guy right here. Let me get a, this is gonna be our LED output. Uh, when it's black, it's off. So if we click our button, it turns on. This would be like your uh, buffer or repeater or a diode is really how you would do this in real life. You can actually just take, uh, this is what it looks like. And I'm not sure if this is gonna work for us in the simulator. We can try. We just delete this line right here. Yeah, so if our button is on, this turns on. So this just repeats our signal. It doesn't change it. But the problem is we, we need it to change in order to manipulate it. So many of you have maybe seen something like this before, this repeater. It should ring a few bells. So let's look at the most basic logic gate that we actually have. This is called the inverter. I'm gonna connect it up to the input and output. And all the inverter does is it takes your input and it gives you the opposite. It inverts it. So if it's off, you can see it turns on. If we turn it on, you can see it goes to off. So that's really all there is to it. Now the inverter is really cool because it is the actually the most basic uh, logic gate that you can make with a transistor. A transistor is an inverter and the the NOT gate is the basis of all other logic gates because it's made of the transistor which is how we accomplish logic in our computers now. This used to be done with vacuum tubes but we can clearly see that we don't use those anymore in our computers. So let's step things up a little bit. Let's Let's make it more complicated. Let's look at logic gates with two inputs. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with the AND gate, which it looks like this. It's a half circle with a line on the other side. We'll hook it up to our input and our outputs and talk about what it does. The AND gate is a nice way of powering things when in certain conditions. And in this case, it's only going to power the output when both inputs are on. So let's watch. If everything is off on this side, everything's off on this side. If we turn on one input, like this, the output doesn't change. If you turn on the other one, it doesn't change. But if we turn them on both together, it does. So that is the AND gate. The OR gate is similar, but with some notable differences. Let me hook it up here. Now the OR gate, you can see if everything is off on the left, everything will be off on the right. 
Now, these are, again, just two input gates. You could have three or four input gates, which look like this, but we won't bother with that right now. So if either one of the inputs turns on, the output turns on. I'm gonna go through every possible combination here and you can see, even if they're both on, or as long as just one is on, that's what or means, okay? If one or the other or both. So I'll show you one more slightly more complicated gate and then we'll get into an application. This is called the XOR gate, X-O-R. It stands for exclusive OR. And it is only on, it will only turn on if one and only one of the inputs is on for a two input gate. Now, really what it means is an odd number of inputs. So if you had a three input gate, it would be on if all of them were on, but we're just looking at two input. So one and only one. So you see if both inputs are off, we're off. If we turn on one, it's on. If we turn on the other, it's on. But look, if we turn on both, it turns off because it's one and only one, okay? That's what the XOR does. So let's use our basic circuits to build something cool. We're gonna build a binary to decimal decoder. This is actually gonna be a device that takes in a binary number and converts it to a decimal number so we know what it actually is. We're gonna build a very basic one, but you can actually take these basic ones to make more complicated ones. So let's take a look. We're gonna need two inputs. We're gonna call them X and Y. So I'm actually gonna label them right here. This one we'll call X, and the other one we'll call Y. These names don't really mean anything, it's just how we're gonna keep things straight, okay? Now we're gonna need four outputs because we're converting from two binary numbers to four decimal numbers. Because we know with two binary numbers, we can uh, express four different numbers, zero, one, two, and three. So we'll need an indicator for each of those and then I'm going to label these as well so that we know and we can check that our answer is right. So our top number will be zero and I'll write the binary next to it, zero, zero. Uh, the next number will be one and I'll write the binary there as well, zero, one, in case you forgot. If you're not familiar with binary, I definitely suggest you check out my binary tutorials. They will help you greatly. Two is one, zero. And three is one, one. Now, in order to get each of these lights turned on, we need to feed the inputs so that the inputs match up to these binary numbers. So for example, let's look at the easiest one, three. Three is going to turn on if both of these are on, but they both have to be on. So what would we use to turn something on if and only if both of them are on? Well, that would be an AND gate. I hope you knew that. So we'll connect the AND gate to here, and then we simply connect each of the buttons into the AND gate. And you'll see the lines automatically kind of scale like this, but you can move them if you don't like the way they landed. And I like to be able to see all my lines. So let's test it. If Y is on and X isn't on, nothing happens. But if they're both on, three lights up. Because right now, X and Y are showing binary for three, one, one, okay? Now for the other gates, it gets a little more complicated because you can see all these others have a zero somewhere in them. Now the way we're going to express a zero is with our not gate. We're gonna say x not, or not x, or y not, or we call it not y. So let's look at two. Now two is on if x is on, so we can just connect it to the normal x line, and we'll, we'll drag this so that we can see it. Or, or sorry, and when, uh, oh geez, I forgot my and gate. Look at that, forgetting stuff all over the place. I'll go ahead and put in all the others. Okay, so let's connect our outputs real quick so we don't forget. Okay, so you can see that the blue means that uh, they're connected, but we don't have any inputs. So, so yeah, two is on when, when X is on and when Y is off. So we can connect our X to it like so. Just drag this out so we can see it. Now we want it to be on when Y is off. Therefore, we're gonna need a not gate to connect to this. And you can see that the not gate always does the opposite of Y. So in order to get this guy to turn on, we need, we're missing the X on. So if we do X on and Y off, we get two. X on being, being one, and Y off being zero. So the next uh, number one is just the opposite. We need not X or X not, however you want to say it. 
and we need Y to be on. Sometimes these lines draw themselves a little goofy. If you see these dots that I'm circling around right here, that just means the wires are tied together, like they're, they're plugged in and it takes the same signal, okay? These dots represent connections, as do these and these. So let's test this. We need X to be off, and it is, and Y to be on in order to make one. And you can see if we turn Y on, we get one. Now the last one, zero, is only true or on if both of our numbers are off. So we're gonna use both of the not inputs. X not, or you know, not X, however you wanna say it, and Y not, or not Y. And I'm gonna drag these lines out so you can see what we're looking at here. That's a little confusing. There we go. You can trace the lines a lot better now. So you can see since X and Y are both off, zero turns on. So let's test all of our possible combinations. We'll count in binary and watch the numbers on the right count in decimal. So first we have zero, zero, that's equal to zero. Zero, one is equal to one. Then one, zero is equal to two. And one, one is equal to three. So now we have successfully developed a way to convert from binary to decimal. Then over here, we can hook this up to a display, like a seven segment display, where it would actually display the entire number. You know, it would draw the zero or draw the two. And this is what your computer uses in order to communicate numbers to you, because it knows that you don't understand binary, unless you're a programmer or a huge nerd like myself. So give the simulator a try, try to make some cool circuits, and send me any questions or any comments you have. In the next video, we're gonna look at some more complicated gates and some more complicated circuits. We're actually gonna build a calculator just using basic gates. We're gonna use not gates, and gates, and or gates. So, thank you for watching. 